keep saying this year. <laughs> if I say this year, just just know I'm talking about 2022. My name is Katrina Walser from Oliphant Cat and I'm a knitting teacher and designer based in Sydney in Australia. And today I'm doing a review of all of the things that I knit in 2022. So I know that this video is a little bit late. I tried to post my equivalent video last year in the end of December, early January. And it's now January 18th, so we're a couple of weeks in, but at least this way I get to actually show you everything that I did and actually completed without there being a couple of extra random days that I didn't cover. So I'm going to try and show you everything that I got done last year. And I will say that I'm specifically just talking about knitting today. So I looked through all of my projects and there were a lot more than I realized. And I realized that if I tried to talk about crochet as well, I would end up having a very long video. So I figured I'd keep it down for you and just do the knitting. If you are interested in crochet as well, I will say I have a monthly podcast that is called On The Needles and I have a whole playlist of all of the episodes if you want to go back and watch those. And I go through all of my crochet and my knitting projects that I've done that month. And I also go through things in a lot more detail that I'm going to go through today. If you have any issues finding the right episode and you want more details for something, I have all of my projects on Ravelry so you can check those details out there and you can just comment down below and I'll help you find the episode that you need. If you do want to see any more info about any of these projects, my profile on Ravelry is also called Oliphant Cat and you'll be able to see links to all the designs that I've done there as well. So if there's anything that I've designed and I will mention when I've designed these things, if you want to make them, then all of those links and all of the patterns are available on Ravelry too. Okay, so some quick stats before we get started, because I always find numbers quite interesting. So in 2022, I completed 43 projects, which was a bit of an eye-opening number when I sat down and looked at it, because I just hadn't realized how productive that I'd been. I will say, if you're new here to the podcast, this is my full-time job. So what I did all of 2022 so that's part of why I can be so productive with it because I do it all day. But also this year, there were a lot of smaller projects, which we'll go into in a sec. So of those 43 projects, 15 of them were samples for patterns that I was writing and that was split over 12 designs. And the big thing that I'm really excited about, which is partially why I got so many projects done this last year, <laughs> is that I finished 12 projects for charity. So I've been trying for a while to make charity knitting a priority and I finally got around to it last year. There were some Facebook groups that I will link down below that I found really helpful in keeping me accountable with the charity knitting and also giving suggestions for which charities to actually donate to. So a big shout out to Sandra who runs the Australian Oh, what is it called? Knit Along for Charity Facebook group. Basically, she finds a new charity every month that needs some knitted items donated and people all just knit together for that charity and post pictures of what they've been doing and stuff. And so that's been really great. Okay, so that's the overall set of stats. And I was trying to decide how to go through all of the individual projects. And what I settled on is that I'm gonna go through them in sort of grouping of each item. So based on the category of what those items are. And this is, the I, I have a pile of them sitting here. <laughs> and this isn't even all of the items that I made. This is just what I still have. So it's gonna be interesting. We'll try and keep this to a reasonable length. Okay, the first category I have to cover is toys. I finished three toy projects last year. They were all the same pattern. And I love this pattern just because of what it's called. So the title of the pattern is Ready Teddy in a Square, which try and say that three times fast. 
<laughs> but it's just a free pattern from an Australian knitting blog and it makes these tiny little cute teddy bears. They are very small. I can't remember exactly, but it was something like this size. And they're sort of rectangular shape because as you can probably guess, they were made in a square and then just sewn up. So these were all charity knits. Uh, I can't remember exactly which charity we were knitting for that month, but I just used sash yarn and the colors, the reason they're all sort of similar colors is that there are a lot of charities who request the Aboriginal colors. So for those of you who aren't in Australia, the indigenous community in Australia, specifically the Aboriginal community, strongly associates with yellow and red and black as their colors. It's the color of their flag. And so a lot of charities who are working with indigenous populations will specifically request items that are in red and yellow and black. So I've been keeping all my red and yellow and black yarn, just as dash yarn for charity knits. And I do not remember at all which yarns these were. <laughs> but I just pulled them out of stash and I made these little teddy bears. So they're very cute. All right, the second category of items I have are mittens. I made two sets of mittens this year and they were both designs of mine that were published by yarn companies. So the first pattern is called the Promenade Mitts and these were knit for knit picks. And the yarn is Gloss DK, which is a merino and silk mix. They have these really cool cable on the back and they have a flap. So I really love fingerless mittens because I like that you can use your fingers still and especially for typing when you're on a computer and stuff. But my hands do get quite cold in the winter. So I wanted it to have a flap as well so that you can keep them warm. Now I'm really proud of this pattern because this was probably the first pattern I ever designed. I don't remember when I came up with these, but it would have been at least back in 2012 or 2013. And at the time I was really daunted by the pattern because I made up how you do this seam right here. So if you can see, I don't know if that's going to come up on the camera, but it's really seamless running up the back of the mitten and figuring out how you actually get the inner and the outer glove to connect in one piece without there being a big ugly seam running across the back was quite tricky to figure out, but it was also really tricky to write. And I'm actually really proud of myself because I sat down to write the pattern and it was surprisingly easy. So I'm pretty proud that I've grown enough as a pattern designer to just be able to tackle things that seemed hard previously. And I'm just really proud of these mittens. So you can download them individually and there'll be links to them and all of the other patterns and things down below. So the other pair of mittens that I made this year are called the Mossy Mitts. They were a pattern written for Knit Crate, who were a subscription yarn company that went out of business at the end of last year. It was a whole debacle, but anyway. The yarn itself though was Malabrigo Dos Tierras, which is a merino and alpaca blend. It's DK weight yarn, which is a ply for my Australian friends. And so they're really, really quick to knit up because they are entirely fingerless. I really enjoyed making these. They're a super quick project and the yarn was beautiful. So it was a custom colorway that was made for Knit Crate, but I think you could make them in basically any A ply yarn. So go to town. <laughs> I don't have the pattern up yet. So if you are interested in buying the pattern, just reach out to me and I will sort of prioritize getting the pattern up on Ravelry. All right, the next category of items I have are Christmas knits. I really love Christmas knitting because I just love Christmas. And so I like the idea of decorating the house with things that I have made. So putting up handmade Christmas decorations is always fun. So the first one that I have is a stocking for my nephew. The pattern is called the Triangle and Reindeer Stockings by Jenny Williams. And people always ask me where the reindeer are. It's because the pattern actually has two different stockings and one of them is triangles and the other one is rainbows. Oh, not rainbows, <laughs> reindeer. So I just always made the triangle ones. So I still really love this pattern. It's easy color work. So if you are looking to get into color work, which I know can be quite daunting, I was scared of it for a really long time. This was actually 
what gave me the confidence to knit more color work, which we will get to later. And it's just very easy color work. It's only two colors at a time and the pattern itself is very repetitive. So it's a good way to get confidence in knitting with color work. The yarn for this was a big mix of Bendigo Willow Mills eight ply yarns, mostly luxury, couple of colors of classic. The second Christmas knit I have for 2022 was one that I did at the end of the year for last Christmas and it is this pillow. <clears throat> so I've been wanting to make this pillow for a while. The chart is one that I made up for a pattern that I never actually ended up publishing. So I've been sitting on the chart for a while trying to figure out what to do with it and how to use it and I've decided to make a pillow. So it's mosaic knitting which if you haven't done color work before and you're a little scared by it, mosaic knitting is some of the easiest color work you can do. I have tutorials and things on it if you would like to check those out. But it's really easy because you only use one strand of yarn at a time. You aren't juggling two on one row. So the front of the pillow looks like this and then the back is just solid green. So this yarn is Heirloom Merino Magic Chunky for the green. And then Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 8 ply held double for the white. Okay, the next category of things I have are beanies, and there are 11 of them. So, this is partially why I finished so many finished objects this year because I was just banging out beanies. It got to the point where if I was a little bit bored with a whip that I was working on and I needed a bit of a mental break with it, I would just sit down and make a beanie in a night. I would just show up to my husband's study and be like, hey, look, a beanie. And he'd be like, where did that come from? And I'm like, I don't know, I just made it in the last couple of hours. <laughs> but it's been really fun, mostly because a lot of these beanies were just knit off the cuff because a lot of the charities that the knit along community was knitting for needed beanies. It was really easy to just sort of whip them out. And I didn't need to stick really particularly to a pattern or anything. I just sort of made them up as I went along. So the first three beanies that I have are beanies that I knit for Stuart House, who are a house <laughs> that looks after kids who need a little bit of help or need a bit of a break from their own home for a week or two and so I made three of these again a couple of them were in the Aboriginal colors and one of them was specifically requested as like a sports team beanie and so I went stash diving and I found some yellow and blue and that's the colors for the Bulldogs who are a rugby team here in Sydney and so I made that as well so these were just made up. I probably yellowed it a little bit too much. I just don't have a lot of yellow yarn in my stash. So I was really like looking for anything I could find. And some of, at least one of the beanies ended up being a mix of eight and 10 and 12 ply yarn in like wool and cotton. And so it was a little bit too much of a hodgepodge and it ended up being a really strange beanie. So. I do feel a little bad that the stuff that I'm sending off to this charity isn't at the sort of quality level that I normally make for myself or my loved ones, but I'm working on it. I'm gonna try and actually be a bit more consistent this year with the charity knits that I make. Okay, the next set of beanies are some ones that I made for my daughter because she outgrew all her old ones. So the first one is this funny shiny beanie. So I inherited a friend of a friend's large yarn stash. I sorted through it, kept the ones that I wanted to keep and donated the rest. And I did not want to keep this yarn. <laughs> so the black is Motivera Starlight, which is a acrylic yarn with a strand of sparkle in it that you can get from Spotlight. And it is not a yarn that I would buy for myself. It was not a yarn I was going to keep, but my three-year-old saw the sparkly yarn and decided that she needed it in her life. She likes it, so that's good enough for me. I'm just not going to knit with this stuff again. 
And then I also made this beanie right here. So at the time I was just calling this my rainbow beanie. I sat down with Amelia and asked her what she wanted out of a beanie, which asking a three and a half year old to design her own knitting pattern is probably a silly thing to do in retrospect. <laughs> But I thought it would be fun. We sat down and scrolled through Ravelry a little bit. And she didn't find anything that she wanted. But this honeycomb stitch pattern is one that I have used a lot. She has a baby blanket in this stitch pattern. And so it's one that I know how to do. So I asked her, I'm like, do you want a beanie that looks like your blanket? And she was pretty excited about that. She'd also been eyeing off this rainbow yarn for a really long time. So this is Knit Picks Chroma Worsted. The gray is just Benigo Woolen Mills Luxury. This is gonna become a repeating sort of motif. I have a giant stash of BWM Luxury, which is why whenever I just need a solid basic color, that's what I end up reaching for. So, made the beanie. Everyone on Instagram seemed to love it. So I ended up writing a pattern for it. So I, Ended up making five of these beanies over the course of the year. There was that one, which was the original sample. And then I made three of them for my daughter, my nephew, and my mother-in-law so they could have a matching set. And because I wrote them around when we were traveling to America and it was the first time we'd gone back to the States since COVID. And also it was the first time we were meeting my nephew. This is now called the Homecoming Honeycombs Beanie. I've been doing my best to publish my own patterns in Australian yarns, or at least yarns that you can buy here in Australia. So the pattern is published for Morrison Sons Quartet, which is an eight ply bamboo wool mix. And it has this lovely gradient comes in different colors and then the gray or just like the main sort of neutral color is Morris and Sons Estate 8 ply and it's just a basic wool and then I made one more which is almost exactly the same and this is going to go into one of the charity knitting boxes for next time they need knits for kids okay the last two beanies that I made were also designs. So these two beanies are from a pattern I wrote for Knit Picks called Hidden Luxuries. And the reason it's called Hidden Luxuries is that it has a little surprise in the brim. It's there in a contrast color. So the brim is a double brim, which means that you end up with this nice rolled edge, which I think is really neat. Plus it's just nice and warm around your ears. So this is Wool of the Andes, bulky from Knit Picks. And then the contrast colors in both of the beanies are We Are Knitters Petite Bull. It is a free pattern on the Knit Picks site. So go to town, I will link to it below if you wanna make some of these beanies. Okay, the next category I have are kids garments. I have six of them, but five of them are the same. So the first one is a cardigan that I made for Amelia. This pattern is called Granny's Favorite and it's by Georgie Nicholson. And the yarn is Fiddlesticks Peppin 8. Fiddlesticks are an Australian brand and I'm really enjoying using their yarns. So it's pretty easy to get a hold of if you're here in Australia. So Peppin is Merino. It is starting to look a little worn, so I might have to get at it with my yarn shaver. It's just getting a little bit pilled. But this was a lot of fun because it's the first time I knit a circular yoke. So I've knit a lot of raglans in my time, but I never knit a circular yoke. And so I see why they're fun. They are a lot less stressful, I guess. Mostly because in a raglan, you're doing the shaping pretty frequently, but in a circular yoke, the increases are spaced out more, but on the rows where you do increase, you do more increases, essentially. So what that means is that it's a little less stressful as a knit because you don't have to pay quite so much attention every row, checking if you're meant to be increasing or not. I took the stereotypical circle yoke picture, 
<laughs> because it was just so it's so satisfying seeing this just like nice circle of knitting that you've done that is magically going to turn into a garment somehow so I did take that picture and Amelia wears this a lot which I've been quite gratified by she picked the button colors which again I would not have picked but she was enjoying it so that's fine and yeah she looks really good in it so she likes it too so I would say it's a very successful knit the other set of cardigans are part of why my finished object count was so high this year. So I made a set of what's called Pages Cardi, which is a pattern that is released by the Red Nose Foundation, specifically the Life's Little Treasures branch of their organization. And so for those of you who don't know, the Red Nose Foundation is a charity here in Australia that provides support for people who are suffering through infant loss uh, if that's something that's triggering to you, I'm going to be talking about it for the next couple of minutes, so feel free to skip to this timestamp here. And so Paige's Cardi is very, very small. The cardigans themselves probably ended up being about this big because they are cardigans that are knit for babies that were stillborn, essentially, way before they were meant to be born. And so they're just tiny, tiny cardies that people can put on their babies if they just need some clothes for a child that was just like smaller than expected. And so it was all mixed for ply yarn. I think some of it was Bo Peep for ply from West Yorkshire Spinners and the rest were actually some yarns that were donated to me by someone who wanted to give their yarn to someone who was needing for charity. So that was Paige's Cardi. And then if we slip into the baby blanket section, I knit five baby blankets. One of them was just a very simple corner to corner blanket, which I was including in the set of Cardi's that I was also giving to Life's Little Treasures. The yarn that was donated to me for this purpose was also squeaky acrylic so I wasn't enjoying working with it to be honest but I'm hoping that the blanket was useful and appreciated for someone who really needed it. So on that note on the same sort of theme which I know is a little bit depressing so sorry bear with me <laughs> uh, I actually lost a child earlier in the year um, and so this is like a cause that's been sort of close to my heart and so I actually also published a pattern. This blanket actually started as an experiment in using slub yarn. I had some slub yarn in my stash and I never really knew what to do with it. And so if you've never seen slub yarn before, it's this funny yarn where like parts of it are really thin and other parts of it are quite thick. And it can look really strange when you try and knit with it. But the trick that I was told is that if you hold it double with a plain sort of regular yarn, then it evens out the strangeness and the lumpiness of the texture and it makes it look a little bit more like tweed or like little bubbles. So I initially was playing with this and I started a blanket back in October of 2021 and I was just mucking around with holding the yarn double with something else and so I just made a quick center out blanket and I found that after I came home from the hospital, when I was recovering from my surgery because of the baby, I was finding having just a plain stockinette pattern to work on really sort of therapeutic. So that blanket went to my cousin because she had had a baby. And then I ended up publishing the pattern as the Rainbow Baby Baby Blanket. It is written for Woolen Works Slub Yarn and Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply cotton and I had talked to Chloe from Woolen Works because I had seen her rainbow slub yarn and I thought it was perfect because uh, rainbow baby means something specific in the pregnancy loss community and so I published this pattern. It's this beautiful sort of speckly rainbow. It knits up really quickly. It's very very simple and a quarter of all sales of the pattern uh, I donate those proceeds to the Red Nose Foundation. So if you're looking for just like a simple like self-care knit uh, in some bright, nice bright colors and supporting an Australian yarn dyer, then I will put links to where you can find the pattern down below. 
The other two baby blankets I made this year were also patterns of mine. <laughs> the first one is called Southern Star and it's an old pattern that I made a while ago and I had a friend who really liked the blanket. She was pregnant and I figured that I would make one for her. So this is a blanket I made from Stash Yarn. It's a mix of Bendigo Woolen Mills A Ply Luxury as well as one color was BWM Classic and then one was West Yorkshire Spinners Bo Peep A Ply. The one thing that I will point out is that this was originally written for 10 ply yarn but I used 8 ply and so if you are considering changing the weight of yarn for a pattern a lot of 8 and 10 ply yarn is very similar in weight so especially for something like a blanket where you don't really care too much about getting exactly the correct size for the item just give it a shot it can work out fine. The last baby blanket I made for the year is called Four Way Stop and this is a pattern I published with Bendigo Woolen Mills so it is on their website and it's made for their 10 ply cotton. So Four Way Stop is an old pattern that I published a while back when I started designing and it had some problems with it that I had been wanting to rectify for years so I'm glad that I got a chance to rewrite it and give it another go. So yes if you're a designer and you're starting out don't worry too much about getting things exactly right. You can always change things later. Nothing's ever fully set in stone. And if you need to make amendments to your patterns, you can always send new versions to the people who've bought it before. All right, we are now getting into the adult garments, which is probably what you're most interested in anyway. <laughs> At least if you're anything like me, you are. So. I knit five neck items for the year, so scarves and shawls. There is one I'm still not allowed to talk about, I'm very excited for it. It's a pattern that's coming out with a yarn company I've been wanting to work with for a really long time and that's coming out in March, so I will talk about it when I'm allowed to. <laughs> so watch this space. So the first one I want to talk about is the jigsaw shawl. This is again an old pattern of mine that I decided to rewrite for an Australian yarn. I just want to really support the Australian yarn community and the local yarn sellers and dyers and things so I've been working on doing that when I can. So the Jigsaw Shawl was first published back in 2017. I republished it to be written for Black Wardle Yarns Blue Gum which is their merino and silk base. I was really glad that I found a merino and silk mix in a ply yarn because that's what the pattern had originally been written for. And this is the bandana size. So it's just this little sort of cowl shawl. Really easy lace, just very geometric looking. And it's one of those things that looks quite complicated but is pretty easy to follow at the end of the day. And so if you are probably not a beginner beginner lace knitter, but maybe an intermediate lace knitter, this is a really good one to practice on. The next yarn, not yarn, the next shawl that I made was my sizzle pop. Also, I shouldn't really say next. I'm not really doing these chronologically, just the next one that I feel like talking about. So I think this takes the prize for the longest running whip that I've ever had. I hadn't really realized how long it took me to make until I looked up the details on my Ravelry project earlier today. I cast this on in October of 2021 and I didn't finish it until October of 2022. So I am usually a very monogamous knitter. I get quite stressed when I have lots and lots of whips, but I have discovered that sometimes I just need to intentionally take a break from a project. So I just need to tell myself, look, this is going into hibernation. I put the status on Ravelry as hibernation and it just goes into the back of the cupboard until I'm ready to work on it. So this is Sizzle Pop by Leslie Ann Robinson. The yarn is by Corolla Down Under Merino, which is the gray color. And then Fortune Yarn Tweety Sock which is the pinky green. Now, the reason this took me so long is that 
I started it when I was still sort of new to brioche. So I had done some two color brioche before, but I hadn't done a lot of complicated two color brioche. And this was by far the hardest I've had to think about a pattern for a really long time. It was just a new skill, trying to read the charts. All the charts were different symbols that I'm used to because brioche has its own set of symbols. It's quite specific to brioche. The way you do the increases and the decreases was just, it was just a lot for my brain. So I worked on this on and off over the course of the year. The thing that helped is that I started teaching brioche classes. And because of that, I had to do a lot of research into how to do different types of increases and decreases in brioche. So what ended up happening is that in the course of my research for the classes, I realized that there were certain ways of doing these decreases that I preferred. And so I ended up just substituting those methods into the pattern. Anytime I saw a left leaning decrease or a right leaning decrease, I just used the one that I knew, not the one that was suggested in the pattern. And it's turned out fine. Ended up being a lot less taxing on my brain. So yeah, that's my sizzle pop. Now, speaking of Brio shawls, the next shawl that I made that I want to tell you about is called Trigonometric and I love this shawl. This was published in Making Magazine's digital edition for the year which is called Gifts. They publish it around Christmas time uh, and I was really happy that I could highlight by Corolla Down Under. I used her 8 ply Polworth. It's just easy one color brioche uh, but the thing that I like about it is that I set it up so that there's a panel running in one direction and then another panel running in the opposite direction, perpendicular to it. And brioche comes up with these very clear lines when you do sort of simple single color brioche. And so I like how geometric it all looks. So if you're looking to make that, it's currently only available in the magazine. Hopefully I will publish it as a single pattern soon. The last scarf that I made for the year was called Starry Vista. And this is a pattern that I released with Knit Crate. So it was written for one of their yarns which is called Uru Yarn Electric and it was a bulky mix of a couple of different fibers I think. can't remember exactly what it was but there was some alpaca in there and some wool. So again I've been sort of fascinated throughout the year with corner to corner construction. So this pattern starts in the corner and you make a lace panel essentially, and then you switch to stockinette part of the way through, but because it's corner to corner, the place where it switches is like on this cool diagonal line. And then you work a bunch of stockinette and then you switch back to lace and do the other corner at the other end. So it makes these like lacy panels on the ends and then just plain stockinette in the middle. Knits up pretty quickly, bulky yarn. Uh, again, because it's a knit crate pattern, I haven't got it up on Ravelry yet, but if you want it, just let me know and I'll prioritize putting it up. last segment I have are adult garments and here we go this is probably the category that I'm proudest of because I have been trying to be very intentional with building a wardrobe that I like this year I found that previously I would knit for the fun of knitting which this comes down to people talk about it as process knitters versus product knitters so like do you like the process of the knitting or do you like the finished object? I've always been a little bit of both, but I usually lean a bit more towards the process side of things because I like playing with yarn and stitches and stuff. But I've been trying this year to very intentionally build a wardrobe that I love as well. So I've put a lot of thought into these garments and figuring out how they slot into my wardrobe and what colors I want to make them in and stuff. So honestly, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. A couple of things caused me issues. Uh, and some of them have just been great. So the first pattern that I would call a bit of a mishap <laughs> was a pattern I designed for Knit Now, who are a magazine in the UK, and it's called Summer Dreams. It's a very simple strappy top, but it has some cool shaping at the top. But when I initially pitched the pattern, it was based on an old sample that I had made just for myself when I was playing around. And that used variegated yarn, which made this like a nice gradient. But the yarn that the magazine sent me were very solid pastel colors. 
And so it came up with a very different effect. The top ended up looking a lot more color blocked than gradient, which wasn't exactly the look I was going for. Plus the size that they requested was a size smaller than I am because when you knit for a magazine, it needs to fit the model rather than the knitter. And so I wasn't really able to try on the top properly. So I wasn't really sure how the fit was working. I am looking forward to rewriting the pattern at some point because I do still really like the design. Hopefully I can get it to work a bit better. But the yarn was Bo Peep Luxury Baby 4 ply. And it's a nice yarn to work with. It's a mix of, I think, acrylic and wool, but it's nice acrylic. So it just makes it easy and sort of machine washable. The other top that I had some issues with was my Daphne top. So this is a pattern by Friday Knits. And Phoebe actually gifted me the pattern because she knew that I wanted to make it. I was very excited with the design when it came out. And so Friday Knits is a indie designer based in Melbourne. And so I really loved the top when she published it. It has this cool princess neckline and these like really cool puffy sleeves. I don't know why I had so much trouble with it. I know that lots of people have very successfully knit this pattern. I just had some weird mental block with it. I think there's something strange about how I do my eye cord. I think my tension is really weird. And also there was quite a bit of negative ease in the pattern, I think. And that's not something I'm really going for at the moment because I've put in a bit of weight recently, which is totally fine, but I'm still trying to find sort of what size I should be making in my various clothes and so starting with something that has negative ease is always a little bit of a risk because if it's too tight it can just be a little unflattering so I had a lot yeah I just I ended up frogging this thing like four or five times honestly I probably should have just let it go it's a good thing to learn I think if something is causing you that much trouble maybe just put it aside for a while maybe reconsider if you want to make it or not because after I've worn it a couple of times, and I have worn it a couple of times, uh, I also just don't know if it's my style. I feel like this is the sort of thing that I would have loved wearing 10 years ago, and now I don't know if it's just a bit too young for me. So I'm still on the fence about what I will do with this. For the moment, I just keep wearing it. So I mean, I like it enough that I wear it. Um, and so yeah, I think it remains to be seen, but it's a good design. Just go out and take a look. Just don't look at my project because it is. I made so many mods that it's basically just inspired by the design at this point and not quite actually the Daphne top. And so that was again knit in Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply luxury because I had quite a bit of it in my stash left over from when I did those Christmas stockings. All right, so those were the two tops or like garments that were a little bit on the fence, everything else I love. So let's just start from what I'm wearing. This is the Carla Galdana top by Heather and Hops. She is a British podcaster and she has designed a couple of garments, I think. And it's just this really cool sort of light summery top. It is knit in Merino Sock Yarn from Ash and Eve Designs and Susan is a dyer based up in Brisbane or at least somewhere in Queensland. Most of the detail in this is in the bottom and it's hard to show you while I'm like sitting down podcasting so I'll try and take some footage of me wearing it full length. The last top that I made is this pink summer top and this was knit from Sadness Gone Tin Line which is a yarn that I picked up while I was traveling in the States, but I'm very happy to report that you can buy it here in Australia because I am obsessed with this yarn. So this is when being a process knitter versus a product knitter comes back into play. I hated working on this. There was just something about the yarn that I just did not like knitting with. It was fine once I got to the sections that were in the round, but from the shoulders to the bottom of the armhole, you knit it flat and purling with this yarn was just 
a bit of a nightmare. So as I was knitting with it, I was like, I'm never using this yarn again. And then once it came off the needles and it was blocked, I am obsessed. It's the lightest weight summer yarn that I've ever used. I think it's a mix of cotton and viscose and maybe a little bit of wool. I'll put the composition up here on the screen. But it just feels so light and airy and it's so nice and cool for the summer. And so I just want to make all the basic tops in it now. And I will put up with the actual process for the finished product. So I made one cardigan. This is Mayama by Pip and Pin. It is uh, best viewed from this side, I think. So it's honeycomb brioche through most of the body, basically all of the body. And the sleeves are just stuck in it. So the yarn that I used is Saltbush Skeins. They are a dyer from New South Wales, but unfortunately they don't actually dye anymore. So when I discovered that she was closing down her business, I was like, I definitely need to get some of this before they close up shop. And this is a colorway called Melted Bubble Obil. It is a very fun knit. It does take a long time. So brioche is pretty simple to do once you get the hang of it, but because of the way the stitches work, you have to do a lot of rows to get the same amount of length as you would if you were knitting just like stockinette or garter stitch. So I was knitting this in the States. We did a big road trip from LA to Yosemite and back, and that's like a five hour drive one way. And even in the 10 hours of knitting in the car, I still made very little progress on the body of this. So it is a bit of a labor of love, but the final product is quite beautiful. And I've worn it a lot. I will say, because we're talking about intentional wardrobe building, I do think I need to be a little careful about the pretty variegated skeins for garments for myself. I think that I'm more than happy to use them for garments for my daughter because she likes colorful stuff. She likes clashing her prints and her colors and things. She just doesn't mind, but that's not really my vibe. So I've been finding it hard to slot this into my wardrobe a little bit because especially in like the spring, most of my shorts are patterned. And so I don't love wearing like really brightly colored jackets over patterned shorts. And so I can only wear this with specific things in my wardrobe. It's not quite as versatile as I'd like. So it's a good learning for me in the future. If I have very brightly colored yarn, I'll probably either keep it to like scarves and, and shawls and beanies and stuff, or I'll use it for my daughter. But I have been getting a lot of use out of this. I just make sure that the stuff I'm wearing underneath is very solid colored. Now, the last three projects I have are jumpers. The first one is Ayami by Isabel Kramer. And this yarn is from Glenhaven Knits, who are a New South Wales based dyer. I picked this up at a yarn show and it is on their, okay. <laughs> they don't seem to have a set name for this base cause even on the labels of the different yarn, they had labeled it differently. <laughs> But I'm going to go with Merry Silk. They were calling it Merry Silk on one of the labels. So it is a merino silk mix. And it is heaven. This yarn is heaven. It's just the perfect amount of tonal variation, I think, to make it interesting, but not too, like, multicolored. So there's, like, darker specks and lighter bits, but in general it just looks sort of solid colored. And it's just this like perfect blue for me because I really love blue. And I just saw this pattern when it was released, I think in the middle of 2021. And I was like, yes, I need to make that. And so I'm glad that I finally did. I will say this is a ply yarn, but again, it was a 10 ply pattern. So I did make it work. I actually don't think I had to modify this too much. The gauge that I got was actually pretty similar to what the pattern originally called for. So again, if you have a eight or a 10 ply pattern and you wanna sub the other weight in for it, it can work. Just make sure you do swatches and if you need to do a bit of maths, you might have to do that. 
I will say I was surprised that I didn't enjoy knitting on the yoke as much as I thought I would. I love cables, but there was something about these cables in particular that I didn't love so much in terms of the actual process. But the final look is beautiful. So there's cabling at the top, cabling at the bottom, and again, it's a circular yoke, so I am excited that circular yokes are a thing that I can do now. Uh, the next jumper that I have is the Golden Fern, and I am very proud of this because, like I said, colour work used to scare me, and I finally bit the bullet and learned how to do it back in 2021. I have a whole video of me just like muddling my way through my first colour work project. And so I finally made a colour work jumper. So I do sort of wish that the first jumper I made had the colour work on the yoke. I did intentionally choose to do a pattern where the colour work was on the bottom of the body because I thought it would matter less if my tension ended up being different. But I think actually it mattered a little bit more and I probably could have gotten away with it a bit more if the colour work was up here on the top. So just to explain a little bit if people haven't done colour work before. One of the scary things about colour work is that the difference in tension between stockinette and colour work can be quite big. So some people can manage to knit their colour work in a tension that is very much the same as their stockinette, but for most people tension changes a little bit between the two. And so trying to figure out how to account for that when you're knitting a garment can be a little tricky. Most patterns will tell you to go up a couple of needle sizes for the color work sections. And I think I just didn't go up enough needle sizes. You can compensate for this by swatching before you start your project in both the stockinette and the color work just to see if you're getting about the same tension and if you don't need to like accommodate for these things. But I honestly don't have the patience for that. I'll do it for my own designs, but I won't do it when I'm knitting someone else's pattern. So it does cinch in a little bit at the bottom when I'm wearing it, but honestly, it's not that noticeable and it just looks really cool. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of comments on this and it's beautiful. So this was knit with the We Are Knitters Finita yarn as the burgundy color and then just a bunch of scrap yarn for the color work. I will say I have to try and remember to be careful about using single ply yarn for garments. So single ply yarn is yarn that hasn't been twisted with like smaller strands twisted together. It's just one big strand of yarn and that sort of yarn can peel a little bit more than other yarns do. It worked out fine I think. I'm just going to need to get my yarn shaver out a little bit more often than normal for this jumper. So yes, the pattern is by Jennifer Steingass, if I didn't mention that. And I do have to say thank you to We Are Knitters because they gifted the yarn to me. So the last pattern and garment that I have for the year is my necessity jumper. So this is a pattern that I've been wanting to write for a very long time. I first made the sample in 2017 but at the time I hadn't made garments before and so I didn't really know how to do all of the grading for the different sizes. And so I'm really glad that I've managed to finally get this out into the world. So it is a color blocked jumper and the main detail is that it has these lovely cables that run down the side of the sleeves and they keep going into the side of where there would be a seam if it wasn't in the round. So it's all in the round and it is written for Wonder Fluff by Knit Picks, which is what I made my sample in, and also Wool in the Gang Feeling Good Yarn, which is a yarn that is available locally from Hive and Gobbler. And Wool in the Gang were really lovely and they donated some yarn support to Ira, who tested the pattern for me. She's a good friend of mine and she also does a lot of pattern tests. And we took the photos together and it was just a lot of fun, so now we can be twinning with our jumpers. And it's a really easy quick knit because it is bulky and is a really good introduction to cables if you have been wanting to get into cables or into garments if you've been wanting to get into garments. The construction is pretty simple. There's just some raglans that run down the side here and then the cables kick in and you can just sort of mindlessly knit 
with some interesting sections every so often. So that is my necessity jumper and the pattern is available on the Knit Pick site and on Ravelry. Oof. That's everything I knit in 2022. So it was a lot. I hope that it, this episode has been interesting and you found some inspiration or some patterns that you've liked or maybe some yarns that you hadn't heard of before, especially if you're in Australia. It's really good to support local yarn. And so again, if there's any more details you need or anything you want to know, just hit me up in the comments and I'll help you out. Now, some things overall that I think I'm going to take away from the year and hopefully take into the new year. I do really enjoy charity knitting, so I do want to keep up with that. And I have a lot of samples of designs and stuff from previous years that I also think I'm going to try and figure out how to donate if it's appropriate for that month's charity knit along in the Facebook group. I also really like that it helps you like bust through your stash yarn because you can just sort of go through and find things that will work out for the charity that month. And I feel personally it's less stressful and I can be more creative because a lot of the time I just make up a pattern, especially for the beanies, as I go along. And so it's nice to not have to worry about writing down the design and figuring out exactly what I'm doing. I can just make it up as I go and then hopefully end up with a nice finished object for the people that I'm sending it to. And I just like helping people. It's like nice to know that things are going to people who need it. So I'm going to try and definitely make a goal to actually keep that up because I did a lot at the start of the year and then just sort of petered off towards the end. Uh, if you haven't been keeping track, I would say, except for the designs that I wrote for yarn companies overseas, the majority of this was made in Australian yarn. There was a lot of Bendigo wool and mills there, which if you've been around here for a while, you won't be surprised by. But buying local, just if you can, give it a shot because there's a lot of lovely Australian yarn around and supporting the local industry, I think can only help to keep it going and also help it grow. I also just really did enjoy intentionally building my wardrobe. So I'm going to try and do that more this year. I do have a lot of projects in my queue that I'm trying to be very careful about matching colors and yarns to patterns to build items that I actually want to wear and will reuse over and over again, not just things that I'm enjoying knitting. So I'm going to keep trying to do that this year too. So like I said, I hope there's been something in there that you found interesting and possibly inspirational. Or if there's something that you add to your queue for 2023 from any of the stuff that I've made, please let me know. Or even just let me know what some of your knitting goals are for the year because I'm really curious to find out what other people are thinking about in the knitting community. And also let me know what your favorite thing that you made from 2022 was or even just all the things you made from 2022 were. Because <laughs> I also find it really inspirational hearing what other people have made. A lot of the designs that I have made that have not been my own patterns were actually patterns that I found through other people's podcasts or through other people's Instagram accounts. So if you let me know what you're making, I would love to hear because I really like finding new patterns that way based on recommendations from people. If you are new here, I probably should have said hello about an hour ago, but hi, thank you for joining. The best way of supporting the channel, if that's something that you'd like to do, is to hit the like button or the subscribe button down below. That really helps Insta Instagram. That really helps YouTube <laughs> to know that it's a video that people like and things, so it'll show it to more people. And if you do want to keep up with any of the future plans that I've mentioned, or if you want to see more details about any of the projects that I've talked through in the last sort of hour, then the best thing to do is to look it up in the old podcast episodes. So there's a playlist of all of them right here. So you can watch through those if you need to. And I will put new episodes up there as well. But until next time, I've been Kat from All Fun Cat, And it's been lovely to talk to you. Happy knitting. Thank you.